The next item of business is a statement by John Swinney on Scotland's plan to improve the educational experience of LGBTI young people. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on John Swinney for up to 10 minutes, please. Presiding officer, the aim of this government's education policy is to achieve excellence and equity for all of our children and young people in a high-performing education system. Equity for all can only be achieved through an inclusive education system. Today, I'm delighted to inform Parliament of these progressive and world-leading set of recommendations to improve the educational experience of our LGBTI young people. I'm proud of this government's record on LGBTI rights, but we must recognise there is more to do. We rightly abhor homophobia, biphobia and transphobia whenever it occurs, but exclusion, isolation, underrepresentation, and silence are more subtle forms of discrimination. They can be equally damaging to children and young people's health and well-being and have no place in our education system. It was to address the passionate and powerful campaigning of Jordan Daly and Liam Stevenson of the Time for Inclusive Education Thai campaign that on the 19th of April 2017, this government announced our intention to form an expert group to provide advice and recommendations on the aims and pledges of Thai. This advice, which would also include the voices of organisations that have tirelessly campaigned for LGBTI equality for decades, would provide a foundation to improve the educational experience of LGBTI children and young people in Scotland. And I'm grateful to Christina McKelvey, MSP, here today as Minister for Older People and Equalities for the key role she played during her term in office as convener of the Parliament's Equalities and Human Rights Committee in helping to establish the working group. Christina McKelvey has staunchly supported the aims and objectives of the Thai campaign over many years, and she ensured that LGBTI issues remained at the top of the political agenda, galvanising this Parliament and through my own party's policy process, helped to ensure that we make changes for the better. Today, I can inform Parliament that the Scottish Government will accept in full all of the recommendations of the LGBTI Inclusive Education Report. I'm delighted that in the Year of Young People, we can present to thousands of children and young people across the country a strong and powerful message of inclusivity, tolerance, respect and equality. This groundbreaking report includes 33 detailed recommendations outlining how we can, in partnership, improve the education experience of LGBTI children and young people in Scotland and hopefully provide other countries around the world with a model for improving the learning experience of LGBTI pupils. The availability of appropriate guidance for local authorities, schools and other education providers is essential. I can confirm that the Scottish Government, in partnership with COSLA, will provide initial guidance to education authorities making clear that education should be LGBTI inclusive and encouraging schools to work together and in partnership with children and young people to enhance LGBTI inclusion. This guidance will signpost teachers towards supporting resources. In addition, we will work with key partners to fully update the existing statutory guidance on conduct of relationships, sexual health and parenthood education in schools, originally published in 2014, to use a thematic outcomes-based approach and to ensure it covers themes relating to LGBTI equality and inclusion. These include understanding LGBTI terminology and identities, representations of LGBTI people and their relationships, recognising, understanding and addressing homophobia, biphobia and transphobia, and an awareness of LGBTI equalities movements. The Scottish Government will evaluate the impact of the updated guidance within five years of publication. To assist with the inclusion of LGBTI content in Curriculum for Excellence, Education Scotland will review and develop specific LGBTI experience and outcomes and benchmarks that are appropriate to learners' ages and stages of development. These will be developed in collaboration with schools, teachers and LGBTI organisations. Education Scotland will also work with the Scottish Qualifications Authority to ensure appropriate inclusion of LGBTI content in the development of new or adapted course specifications and relevant guidance, which will ensure 
that LGBTI inclusion is embedded across the curriculum. I recognise and value the work undertaken by initial teacher education providers throughout the country in relation to LGBTI inclusion. Never, nevertheless, the Scottish Government can provide additional valuable support. We will therefore work with our colleagues in further and higher education to ensure a long-term sustainable approach to LGBTI inclusive education within initial teacher education provision. This will ensure our teachers of the future are equipped with the skills and attributes to deliver LGBTI inclusion within any education setting and better support the children and young people whose lives they set out to positively influence. I also recognise the importance of developing suitable career-long professional learning opportunities for our existing education staff. I can confirm that the Scottish Government will fund sustainable LGBTI training that is accessible to all teachers and school staff in Scotland. We will also lead and resource a new free-to-access basic awareness LGBTI inclusion training course that will be suitable for all schools in Scotland. This course will be piloted in 2019 and following evaluation made available nationally during 2020. The Scottish Government will ensure adequate funding is in place to enable these programmes to meet demand. To ensure all schools have appropriate LGBTI teaching resources, we will review existing resources and fund the development of new teaching resources to support LGBTI inclusive education. These new learning resources will focus on LGBTI curricular inclusion from early years to senior phase. We will also work with our partners to develop a new toolkit to enhance LGBTI inclusive education at a whole school level. This will help increase staff confidence in addressing instances of prejudice, bullying and engagement with parents and carers of LGBTI children and young people. This toolkit will build upon respect for all our national approach to anti-bullying. Inspection has an important role in evaluating how well schools are developing and improving LGBTI inclusion. I can confirm Education Scotland will continue to provide training for school inspectors to ensure they are able to engage in professional dialogue about LGBTI equality and inclusion and have an understanding of what LGBTI inclusive education looks like within different educational settings. These actions comprise a new national framework to support consistent and effective delivery of LGBTI inclusive education in all Scottish schools. The working group recommended these actions as an alternative to legislation as they believe they are achievable by the end of the current parliamentary term. Nevertheless, the Scottish Government will consult the working group on further measures should progress be insufficient within this timescale. The Scottish Government and COSLA have demonstrated through the successful implementation of the school clothing grant and educational psychologist training that swift and effective progress can be made through partnership working in place of legislation. As outlined in the Chamber in this debate in April last year, action is needed now. The Scottish Government and COSLA will shortly plan the practical delivery of these recommendations. The Working Group recognises the Government's desire to implement their recommendations as quickly as possible to ensure they are implemented before the end of the current parliamentary term in May 2021. I can therefore announce they will reconvene as an implementation group to drive this work forward whilst providing accountability and oversight. I am aware that some may say that LGBTI inclusive education could undermine the values of their faiths or beliefs. I do not take this view. Human rights and the values of respect and tolerance are universal. Children and young people should feel happy, safe, respected and included in their learning environment and all staff should be proactive in promoting positive relationships and behaviour in the playground, classroom, wider learning community and society. This is central to the delivery of curriculum for excellence and the implementation of getting it right for every child. Education remains by far the most effective means that we have to improve the life chances of all young people. The actions I've outlined today will ensure that all young people have the opportunity to excel in a way that works for them as individuals. I am confident that this is the right approach for Scotland to continue to get it right for every child. Finally, Presiding Officer, I'd like to thank each member of the group and all who have contributed for their energy, commitment and determination to improve LGBTI inclusive education over the last year. 
Reaching consensus among such a diverse group was not easy. Individuals would understandably come to the table with their own perspectives, priorities and concerns. There would be a great strength of feeling around the table, driven by the passion and importance individuals attach to their work and to their role. And nobody is wrong to feel like that. But through a process of patient and respectful dialogue, members of deeply varied perspectives unanimously agreed the delivery of a world-leading set of recommendations that will make a real difference to the educational experience, not just for LGBTI young people, but for all children and young people in Scotland. That is an immense achievement. It is one that each member of the group has contributed to achieving, of which each mem member of the group should be immensely proud, and which this Parliament should value, commend and embrace. One of the most enduring and for me inspiring characteristics of Scottish society is our belief in equality. It is the beating heart of our country's approach to education. It is a value enshrined in our approach to social security. It drives our route to creating an inclusive economy. It is central to the importance we attach to our human rights. And today, we take another step forward by ensuring that all of our children and young people will have the opportunity to, to better appreciate LGBTI issues within our education system, and our country will be the better for it. Before I move on, can I say to those in the public gallery that we don't allow clapping, cheering, jeering, or otherwise, so, so please refrain. Um, the Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in the statement and I intend to allow around 20 minutes for these questions. Uh, would members who wish to ask a question please press the request to speak buttons and I call Annie Wales. Thank you Deputy Presiding Officer and I would like to thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement. As someone who has been on board with improving the education experience of young LGBTI people since day one of being an MSP, I sincerely welcome this statement today. And I too wish to put on record my thanks to those individuals and organisations who have helped us to reach this point. And I appreciate that the aim is to ensure the recommendations are in place by the end of the parliamentary session. But can I ask the Cabinet Secretary when he expects us to see a published timetable for implementation? And can I ask the Cabinet Secretary how will the Scottish Government ensure consistency across all local authorities and how it will be ensured that it is not just led by an individual teacher and TED teachers who are passionate about the cause and will teacher training be mandatory and accessible to all school staff? And finally, will parliamentarians have the opportunity to review progress regularly in an entirely transparent process? And at what stage will the Cabinet Secretary step in if not enough progress has been made? John <coughs> Swinney. Thank Annie Wells for uh, her endorsement of the direction to travel here and assure her, as I hope my statement has, has done today, that uh, the government and our partners who have worked together in producing this report um, are intently serious on making sure that this happens and happens as quickly as possible. The whole uh, nature of the recommendations from the working group uh, are to make early and swift progress and I uh, embrace that as an objective. Uh, so I give uh, Annie Wells the assurance that we will come to Parliament with uh, a timetable for implementation uh, as soon as we can possibly agree that with our partners. Um, obviously, I, I've said that the working group will continue to um, essentially oversee this process as an implementation group. So I suspect um, uh, if there's any slackness in the timescale, I won't just hear it from Annie Wells. I'll hear it from the implementation group as well, and rightly so. Um, as for the question of consistency across all local authorities. I think this gets to um, the nub of some of the dilemmas we wrestle with in this institution at all times, that the government sets out guidance, we look to local authorities to take it forward in a consistent fashion, but of course there are checks and balances in the system, such as, for example, the inspection role of Education Scotland, who can give feedback on whether or not they see changing practice on the ground within our school community. Um, training will, of course, be um, accessible for all staff, and uh, I'm in Parliament's hands as to 
uh, how much information Parliament wants to see on this. I'll happily uh, report to Parliament periodically by placing information in SPICE. I'm very happy to, uh, perhaps in due course, we should have a debate about progress in government time, which would enable us to take stock on whether sufficient progress has been made in due course. But uh, I certainly give Annie Wells the commitment on the, the government's part that we will do all that we can to move swiftly on this agenda. <clears throat> Ian Gray. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and uh, my thanks too to the Cabinet Secretary for early sight uh, of his statement. Uh, let me begin by associating these benches with the Cabinet Secretary's praise for Jordan Daly and Liam Stevenson and the Thai campaign. Uh, it was indeed powerful and passionate, but it was also tactically astute, carefully cross-party, and as a result, as we've seen today, very, very effective indeed. The government's expert group and acceptance of that group's recommendations should certainly mean a significant stride forward in LGBTI young people's right to a fair, inclusive and equal educational experience, safe from bullying and discrimination. And we can all be proud of that, but none more so than Liam and Jordan. Can I ask two questions of clarification? What level of resource does the Cabinet Secretary envisage being made available to cover the costs of in-service training, learning materials uh, and other <coughs> costs? Uh, and when the Cabinet Secretary says he will work with key partners to update statutory guidance for schools, can he tell us which key partners he envisages uh, and assure us of the breadth of that engagement? John Swinney. Uh, on the question of resources, obviously that um, the costs will be conditional on the manner and the method of our implementation, which obviously will take time to uh, discuss with our local authority partners as to how best we can proceed on those questions. And I'll, as consistent with my answer to Annie Wells, I'll happily come back to Parliament uh, to share that information in due course. Um, on the question of further guidance, uh, I think w w what I've tried to do here is to take as broadly inclusive an approach as I possibly could do. And I'm profoundly grateful to organisations of different backgrounds and different perspectives who've come together to take this agenda forward. And that's the spirit in which I want to proceed for uh, further stages. I think that's by far the healthiest way we can proceed. So I will ensure that it, clearly um, our local authority partners will be absolutely central to the implementation of this agenda. Um, as will our work with professional associations, uh, with the um, interested stakeholder organisations uh, and obviously the implementation group that I'm continuing to, um, to, to, to work with. But I, will, I give Parliament the assurance that my intention is to be as inclusive as I possibly can do to make sure that we have agreement about how to proceed as we have managed to get to on this point. Now, I have a lot of members who wish to ask questions, so could I ask people to be concise in both questions and answers? Uh, Ruth Maguire, followed by Jamie Green. Presiding officer, I support the Thai campaign because I believe that our young people have the right to see themselves and their families respectfully and honestly reflected in what they're taught in school. And I agree with the Cabinet Secretary that human rights and values of respect and tolerance are universal. Can the Cabinet Secretary provide information on how the Scottish Government will ensure that private schools are monitored to make sure that their provision of relationship, sexual health and parenthood education is inclusive, is appropriate, respectful and importantly meeting the needs of all young people in their care? Well, it was very good, but it was hardly concise. <laughs> John Swinney. <laughs> I'll try to do slightly better, presiding the officer, to not incur that. Um, uh, obviously, the, the Education Scotland has a, a role within the private sector in undertaking school inspections, and the issues that I have raised here and the perspectives I have uh, brought to Parliament will be reflected in inspections. Um, independent schools have, in many respects, a lot of good practice in this area. Um, a number of independent schools have been recognised with LGBT Youth Scotland Gold Charter Awards as an indication of their commitment to this agenda. And I'm quite sure that independent schools will wish to be part of the inclusive approach that the government is taking forward. Jamie Green, followed by Monica Lennon. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, what's the fact that we need statements like that of today's still saddens me? The fact that we have it greatly encourages me, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his words today. But can I push a little bit further and just check and clarify that if the guidance and training that he's announced today will be mandatory in all schools in Scotland for all teachers and all school staff, and if the Cabinet Secretary is not happy 
that the spirit of today's announcement uh, is not being delivered on the ground in practice, what additional legislative options are available to him to ensure that every pupil in every school in Scotland receives the support they deserve? John Swinney. I, I think the, Mr Green's question gets to the nub of some of the challenging issues about the way in which our education system operates. And as I've rehearsed with Parliament before on, on different topics, our education system operates on the basis that we create a framework within which individual schools operate. But we expect individual schools to, to operate consistent with that framework, but not to essentially deliver exactly the same practice in every individual schools, because context will vary from school to school. I think there's two elements of, of this um, issue which I think should give Parliament confidence. One is that we have gone to great lengths to create an inclusive process across all different perspectives that would get us to the strongest point of agreeing that framework. And we've now got to that point, and I, and I, I very much welcome Mr Green's um, welcome of that process. And the second thing that should give us confidence is that the guidance that we um, take forward on all aspects of education is, in my opinion, broadly taken forward by individual schools. And when we look at Education Scotland inspection reports, I see them every single week in life before they're, they're, just as they're being published. And they demonstrate to me schools operating within the framework of the, uh, the, the advice that we give. Um, and we expect schools to be able to do that. So I think, I hope that gives Parliament some confidence. On its final point about what other um, mechanisms are available to me, there is always the mechanism of legislation and we can always make it, we can enforce it onto the face of law. Um, I think what this approach allows us to do is to get on with it faster. And we demonstrated with the school clothing grants that we were able to, to go from um, identification of the challenging issue to a solution within six months. And that's the type of um, pace that I want to try to set to advance on these issues. Monica Lennon, followed by Jenny Gilruth. Thank you, Presiding Officer. This is very welcome news from the, the Cabinet Secretary. I led a debate on the Thai campaign in Parliament last year to promote its, its aims, and today's statement is a monument, monumental victory for the vibrant campaign led by Jordan and Liam and others. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that it's crucial now that the momentum behind the Thai campaign is not lost, and how will the Scottish Government help to ensure that this movement to secure long-lasting change in our society continues to go from strength to strength. John Swinney. Presiding Officer, the measures that I've set out today in responding and accepting all of the recommendations of the working group are designed to essentially give us that opportunity to proceed and advance on these questions. Um, I've put in place, I think, sufficient checks and balances to make sure that is the case. But as I said in my response to Annie Wells, I'm very happy to come back to Parliament for a, a, a stock take debate in government time in due course to assess the level of progress that's been made and to ensure that the commitments that have been made here uh, we begin to see reflected on the ground. I should say actually that in fairness to many of our schools around the country I see a lot of this practice reflected on the ground already so a lot of schools have not been waiting for uh, with the greatest of respect to the, the, the fine words of the, the working group many schools are embarking on this activity uh, I saw some fabulous work in this respect at uh, Presswick Academy when I was there last week, and I see it reflected in many schools uh, across the country. Indeed, Kirkcaldy High School just won uh, a prestigious award from COSLA for the work that they've undertaken on LGBT, <coughs> LGBTI awareness, and uh, I had the opportunity to congratulate the head teacher on that award just the other day. Uh, a quick reminder of brevity, please. <laughs> Jenny Gilruth, followed by Ross Greer. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I also welcome this afternoon's statement, uh, both as a member of Scotland's LGBTI community and as a former teacher. Under Curriculum for Excellence, health and wellbeing is the responsibility of all. Therefore, how will the Scottish Government ensure that all teaching staff have the necessary knowledge, skills and expertise to deliver LGBTI inclusive education in every single one of Scotland's secondary schools? And will the Government seek to monitor the impact of any agreed training on pupils' experience of their educational journey? John Swinney. Um, the, the, there are essentially um, two critical aspects to how we proceed on, on, on the agenda about teacher education. The first is obviously about ensuring that initial teacher education is correctly focused to accommodate all of these questions. 
and uh, that will be um, one of the priorities for, for uh, new teachers. But obviously, many existing members of staff uh, will require support, and uh, I'm uh, very pleased to see the comments of the Educational Institute of Scotland recognising the, uh, the, the approach the government intends to take in this respect uh, to uh, support that work. In relation to uh, Jenny Guru's point about the opinions of pupils, one of the priorities that I'm very keen to take forward is the strengthening of pupil voice within our education system. And again, I see many very strong elements of the articulation of that pupil voice in the time that I spend in schools. I saw it vividly at uh, New Battle High School yesterday in Midlothian. And I would expect through the channels of pupil voice to hear that articulation of pupil experience. And it's vital that we listen and hear that experience. Ross Greer, followed by Alex Cole Hamilton. Thank you. Can I congratulate Jordan, Liam and everyone who's delivered something that won't just transform lives but will save them as well. And can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, when he says that um, Education Scotland will continue to provide training for school inspectors, that this training will change in line with the higher expectations that we now have of our schools and that the framework for inspections will change as well as the training for inspectors? John Swinney. Well, the, the, obviously, the framework for inspection reflects the um, priorities we expect uh, to see within Scottish education. So um, that will follow um, from the statement that I have set out to Parliament today. And in relation to the support for inspectors, we want to make sure that our inspectors, as they do on all questions, um, assess the education system consistent with the frameworks that we put in place uh, for this important activity. Alex Cole Hamilton, followed but, by Gail Ross. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Congratulations to the Thai campaign. Looking forward to celebrating with you all later. Is the Cabinet Secretary aware of the unspoken pressure still felt by some teachers in Scottish faith schools to avoid inclusive education, caused by the tension that exists or is felt to exist between the promotion of LGBTI rights and the teachings of the church? And further to Ross Greer's question, will he expand on recommendations 30 and 31 so that the delivery of inclusive of education is now a key standard against which schools are scored in the inspection regime. John Swinney. Well, first of all, schools are not scored. I want to make that point absolutely crystal clear. Schools are not scored. It's a rather old-fashioned concept, if I may say that to Mr Cole Hamilton, a very old-fashioned concept. The purpose of inspection is to assist schools in improving performance to meet the needs of young people as described in the frameworks of education. And that is the purpose of inspection. Um, now, in relation to the, uh, the, the issues in faith schools, I, I have been deeply appreciative of the breadth of opinion that has come together in the working group. Uh, and, I, and I highlighted this in my statement of people from very different perspectives and backgrounds. And the success of the working group is that those individuals have been able to come forward including the Scottish Catholic Education Service, to reach a point of agreement that is deeply valued by the government, and I commend every organisation who contributed to that. And I think it's an indication of the willingness of everybody across this broad cross-section to, to make progress on the vital issues of LGBTI inclusive education and to see that reflected in every educational setting. Gail Ross, followed by Oliver Mundell. Thank you, President Officer, and I would like to also add my warmest congratulations to everyone in the Thai campaign. What a day well done. Deputy First Minister, how will the Scottish Government ensure that the implementation of the whole report is delivered consistently in all schools so that young people can receive an education which is inclusive of the wider LGBTI community, their history and their contributions to our society? John Swinney. Uh, that, that essentially will be reflected in the guidance that a combination of the guidance that we make available and also in the resources that are made available and that will obviously be uh, a significant part of the uh, of the work that's got to be done in this respect so um, I assure Gail Ross that many of those practical and operational questions flow directly from the working group's recommendations uh, and they will be taken forward as part of the implementation program. Oliver Mundell followed by James Dornan. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Campaigners and third sector organisations have been instrumental in getting us to this point. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline uh, what day-to-day -day role he sees them playing in the practical delivery of these recommendations? John Swinney. Well, I, th I think what I'd like to see is the organisations involved in 
ensuring that we actually deliver all of this, which is very important. But then also that we are, um, uh, we benefit from their input in shaping the approaches that are taken to make sure the materials, the resources, the training, the approaches that are designed uh, are appropriate to achieve the objectives that have been set out in the report. So um, consistent with what I said to Ian Gray a few moments ago, I'm very keen to make sure this is a very inclusive process of organisations that have contributed so much to getting us to where we are today. And I want that to continue to be the sentiment that, under, that underpins the approach to implementation. James Dornan, followed by Kezia Dugdale. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, I welcome today's announcement and congratulate the Thai campaign, Jordan, Liam and everybody else involved for all they've achieved. Cabinet Secretary, Scotland is widely recognised as one of the most progressive countries in Europe in LGBTI rights, and I think today's announcement only reinforces that position. But what other action is the Scottish Government taking to protect and promote the rights of the LGBTI community? John Swinney. It, well, obviously, Mr. Uh, in response to Mr Dornan's question, the, the Government has taken forward a range of measures through the, the funding and support that we make available to organisations that uh, advance uh, the, the issues and the concerns of the LGBTI community. Um, we uh, take forward also the work to tackle um, hate crime and uh, prejudice. Uh, we take forward a very explicit approach to the tackling of inequalities and the approach on education will be um, another component of the wider agenda the government advances in this respect. Kezia Dugdale and I hope to have time for David Torrance. What a day, presiding officer, and what a distance we've come from section 2A. My sincerest congratulations to all of those involved. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, does he accept that cultural attitudes to sexuality have advanced far faster than those around gender identity? And what plans does he have to address that and the growing contention around the self-declaration of gender in schools? John Swinney. I, 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 I do recognise the uh, significant progress that's been made on, um, the on the question of sexuality and as I hope I conveyed adequately in my statement, I think the country is the better for it and as a consequence. Uh, obviously, we uh, are taking care to make sure that schools are well supported in dealing with the issues of uh, sexual identity and these issues are currently under consideration uh, actively within government and ministers will come back to Parliament with uh, further updates on the progress uh, that is taken forward in that respect. But I would assure Kezia Dugdale of the government's determination, as I hope again I conveyed in my statement, to make sure that we are in no way tolerant of the exercise of prejudice towards individuals for the choices they make. We should take people for who they are and who they believe to be, and that should be reflected in the approaches that we take. And the last question is from David Torrance. Thank you, President Officer. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that schools can learn from each other and share good practice? And at groups like Kakori High School LGBTI group in my constituency, we recently won the President's Award at the 2018 Consular Excellence Awards for work in providing a safe space for pupils tackling homophobia and their campaigning and training with groups and organisations across Fife and the rest of the country, an example for other schools to follow. John Swinney. Um, President Officer, I, I, I rather got to Kakori High School before Mr Torrance did, but it allows me to reiterate Kakori High School's very significant achievement of the President's Award at the uh, 2018 uh, COSLA Excellence Awards. It's a recognition of uh, essentially the point I was making to Parliament a few moments ago that some schools, many schools, are actually advancing on this agenda far faster than our wider society because they are listening to people voice, they are making sure that the school, our schools are safe places for young people where young people feel at ease and comfortable and I unreservedly commend Kakori High School on the tremendous achievement that they have made and Mr Torrance is uh, entitled to be very proud of the achievements of one of the secondary schools in his constituency. That concludes questions on the statement about improving the educational experience of LGBTI young people. I'll take just a moment or two for people to shift around before we move on to the next item of business. <laughs>